Hello and thank you for your interest in this presentation on ethics and accreditation. It was developed by the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority Ethics Service and is intended to be used to help programs and sites prepare for site accreditation visits. During this presentation we'll provide a basic explanation of ethics and identify some examples of ethical decisions in healthcare. We'll discuss ethics and accreditation, the role of standards, and identify what exists and what you should have in place in order to support ethical decision making in your area. We make judgments about what is the right thing to do. Sometimes we need to decide between options that aren't very good. We need a systematic way of making hard decisions. Ethics is not a judgment or a declaration of ethical or unethical. It's a process for thinking through the situation and coming to the best, not necessarily the perfect, decision. It's as simple and as complicated as that. Everyone has different values and decision-making methods, and every single decision that's made is about navigating those differences between human values to sort out what the right thing is and then how to make it happen. It'll be different, but no less important for everyone in the organization. How to divide up the budget? Who gets priority for scarce vaccinations? Is there anything I can do to clean this room faster? Should we turn off this ventilator? How do we provide care for a patient who's violent or abusive? Ethics is a systematic way of looking at how we decide what the right thing to do is. It isn't a judgment or even a definitive answer of the perfect solution. It's a process for evaluating all the options and coming up with the one that's best, all things considered. An ethical dilemma is a difficult situation with two or more options to choose from. There may be a disagreement about what's important between the patient and healthcare provider, between patient and family, between the healthcare team and the family. What's important to one stakeholder is different from or incompatible with what's important to another. Your personal and professional values might impact what you consider to be a dilemma. In an ethical dilemma, there are always multiple options. For example, discharge or keep in hospital, panel or don't panel, hold someone involuntarily or let them leave against medical advice. In an ethical dilemma, no matter which option you choose, you'll need to make trade-offs. For example, you may need to trade someone's freedom for safety, or you may need to trade length of life for quality of life. Neither is good, either you have a higher quality of life that's shorter or a longer life that has more suffering. Another important factor in ethical dilemmas is that these solutions are mutually exclusive. You can't do both things at the same time. You can't withdraw life support and leave it on. You can't always keep them safe and respect their choices. The key is to make sure you've thought of all of the important factors, weighed and balanced them, and come up with the best option, all things considered. It won't be perfect, but at least you'll be able to describe the choice process and how you did the best you could with the information that you had. Some examples of ethical dilemmas include things like placing a feeding tube, caring for a resident who doesn't want to bathe, supporting the choices of someone who is, whose competence is unclear, Caring for someone who's racist, abusive, or violent. Deciding on resource allocation of scarce organs for transplant. Whether to withdraw or not start a life-sustaining intervention like a ventilator. And restraints. Ethics can happen in non-clinical or administrative areas as well. Managing short staffing and other personnel issues. Reallocating resources for new or emerging issues like pandemics and natural disasters. Boundary crossings and violations. And whistleblowing are all examples of non-clinical ethical issues. It's also important to look at what an ethics process will not be able to resolve. Things like errors or accidents, while difficult and sometimes serious, are not ethics. Personality conflicts, bad behavior, and disappointing or tragic events, while negative and impactful, will not be resolved through application of an ethics tool. Similarly, ethics is not about complying with policies. While we agree that breaking the rules is probably unethical, 
There are other ways of managing those kinds of situations, like performance management and HR processes. This presentation is intended to focus on how we make difficult ethical decisions, how to compassionately engage when there are disagreements about the care plan, or when we have too many resource priorities. Ethics is about doing the right thing. There are many initiatives and activities that we undertake in healthcare, all because they're the right thing to do. They all come under the umbrella of ethics. The WRHA's values are listed in the strategic plan. These guide all our decisions as employees. We're expected to uphold them and ensure they're factors in decisions we make in the course of our work. It might be helpful to think about examples of how your work reflects these values. Further to that, consider for yourself and your team what ethics looks like in your area. Does everyone know what an ethics issue is? What kinds of decisions contain ethical elements? Where do you go when you need help with a decision? What resources do you have? To start, ethical organizations need an ethics infrastructure. This means we need to have an ethics champion to help with tough decisions. That can be as simple as knowing who has taken ethics courses or workshops and where to find tools and resources that might help. We can also look to principles like client-centeredness to help guide us towards ethical practice. Another important resource for ethical decision making is standards. Standards are the blueprint for high quality care. Accreditation standards make the elements of high quality care clear and measurable. They drive us to live our values and underscore the importance of careful, thoughtful decision making. Accreditation Canada emphasizes ethics in its standards because it's concerned with ensuring that healthcare organizations and the people that work in them pay deliberate attention to doing the right thing and making principled ethical decisions about everyday things. For example, all clinical programs have a few common standards related to ethics in addition to the program-specific standards. Things like having a process to identify and manage ethical issues, meeting research ethics standards, and ensuring clients and families have access to support in their healthcare journey are important for every team, every client, and every family across the spectrum of health services. There are also standards that don't specifically mention ethics, but which are there because they reflect ethical principles like fairness, beneficence, and autonomy. Timeliness and appropriateness of interventions, upstream care that prevents illness and other harms, and high quality services at the beginning and end of life and throughout are essential to effective systems. Similarly, ensuring we have processes that prevent people from falling through the cracks, protect privacy, and evaluate and address risk and safety are basic expectations for all programs. In fact, all accreditation standards are grounded in ethics. They're about doing the right thing. Have a look at your program's specific standards. Which ones stand out as directly related to ethics? How are you meeting them? Where do you need to do some work? To meet the standards that are directly related to ethics, consider what infrastructure you have in place to help you make decisions. What decision-making tools do you have? Do you have access to an ethics consultant or committee to help navigate the more challenging situations? Where do you have capacity? Do you have access to people who have taken ethics workshops or programs that might be able to help you work through a decision? What would be helpful? It'll also be important to have and for staff to know how to access documents like an ethical decision guide, a patient bill of rights, and policies and procedures that can provide some support and guidance when teams are struggling with how best to provide care. It's not essential that direct care staff memorize a decision-making framework or method, just that they know where they can go for help and support during a challenging care situation. To that end, it'll be helpful for managers and other leaders to prepare staff for questions they may get from surveyors, so they feel prepared to respond during the site visit. Surveyors are interested in the kinds of situations and decisions your team might encounter and how you approach these decisions ethically. They might want to know about the kinds of things that keep staff awake at night, 
and how someone would go about getting help when they don't know the right thing to do. WRHA Ethics Services is a very small team, but we have a wide reach. We report to WRHA Executive and have a seat on various committees across the region to ensure ethics is considered in decisions at all levels of the organization. To support clinicians, patients, and teams with ethical decision making, the WRHA board and leadership is invested in doing the right thing. We've developed a decision making tool for use by clinicians and leaders and can help with specific situations through ethics committees at the regional or site level and ethics consultation at some sites. We offer regular learning opportunities for ethics and have an ethics lens on policy and evidence-informed practice tool development. We can connect you with tools, strategies, and resources for addressing general or specific ethical questions and conflicts. To assist with working through a difficult situation, the WRHA's Ethics Decision Guides for Clinical or Patient Care and organizational or administrative issues are available on the WHA Ethics Services webpage. There are also workbook versions and two-pager versions that may be useful when you have some experience with the questions considered at each step. These guides are helpful in providing a systematic way of working through a situation so that you can arrive at a decision that allows you to sleep at night knowing even if it isn't ideal, all the most important ethical factors have been discussed and considered. To unpack how high quality, safe, ethical care is delivered in your area, think about the kinds of things that do keep you awake at night. What does ethics look like for you? How do you and your staff and your patients or clients manage conflicts? What resources do you have? What strategies and tools do you use? Do you know how to find and use an ethical decision-making tool? Find your resources and ensure staff in the area know where to go for help. For more information on the tools and resources available to WRHA staff who are looking for ethics decision support, please have a look at the materials on the WRHA Ethics Services webpage or contact us directly. If you don't see what you need, we're happy to help find or develop it. We can also help with specific dilemmas, setting up ethics committees, and tailored ethics education events. Please let us know what you need. We're also happy to answer any questions stemming from this presentation. Contact us via the methods on your screen. Thank you for your time.